The following presentation of City Cinematheque was made possible, in part, by the support of the Taipei Cultural Center in New York, the Ministry of Culture of Taiwan. Welcome to City Cinematheque, where the art and pleasure of the movies are the subject of serious discussion. I'm your host, Jerry Carlson, and I teach film studies at the City College of the City University of New York. Today, we're taking another glimpse at the great cinema of the 21st century from Taiwan. Today's film is The Bold, The Corrupt, and The Beautiful. And if that sounds like a crime saga, you're right. But it's a crime saga with a difference the centered on women. And indeed, you might even call this the Taiwanese godmother. We'll be talking about that and how the film relates to Taiwanese history after today's screening. And don't be surprised if we're not in the studio. I'll be talking with the film's director in Taipei City, Taiwan. Now, enjoy this marvelous crime film, The Bold, The Corrupt, and The Beautiful. Welcome back to City Cinematheque. I hope you enjoyed this opportunity to see an extraordinary crime family film, The Bold, The Corrupt, and The Beautiful, as part of our Taiwanese cinema in the 21st century uh, series. As I promised in the introduction, we're not in the CUNY TV studios. In fact, we're in Taipei, Taipei City, Taiwan, and I have the pleasure today of having with us the director of the film, Yang Yacher. Welcome to City Cinematheque, Yachar. Hi, nice to meet you. Great. So let's just start with how you became a filmmaker. This is your third feature film. Yeah. And um, how, how was it you chose to become a filmmaker? Then we'll talk about this film, this very, very rich film. I was chosen by others to enter the field of film. I wasn't a filmmaker. I didn't have a job after completing the mandatory army service. I did all kinds of work to make a living, including selling stationery for a few years. In order to make some extra money, I started to write scripts. After a while, people thought I was good at script writing. That's how I got into this field. And now, I've been working in the movie industry for more than 20 years. The film we've just seen, I think, is uh, really an extraordinary crime film. It has been given a number of awards, two awards for your actress, another award for, for the film itself. You were nominated for Best Director yeah. in the Golden Horse. First, I want to congratulate you. Uh, but I also want to ask you um, why, at this moment, you chose to make uh, uh, this kind of crime film, uh, yeah. this historical crime film, and also, um, very important, I, I think, for this film, that this is a film about, let's just be honest, a woman gangster. Yeah. Uh, and this is a, it's a very important thing. This is a male-dominated genre. And this is one of the things that makes this film so fascinating. So why the crime film and why the women? My reason for making this crime film was that in the past 10 years, Taiwan's politics were really dark, even worse than before. I want to let the general audience know what's going on. The public knows only what's on the surface. Why is the protagonist a female? Because in Chinese society, women's social status is lower than men's. I saw a news report about a judge accepting a bribe. Actually, it's three judges accepting the bribe together, and their wives and lovers helped to collect the money. This news story really interested me. I wanted to investigate the story beneath the surface. Was this 
white gloves or money laundering. My friends told me that in Taiwan's current political environment, there are a lot of female money laundering operators. One of the things that uh, cr critics have always said about the gangster film is that I, I should say there are two camps. Uh, one camp says the gangster film is all about somebody who tragically does not understand the system and is destroyed by the fact that they become a criminal. But yet there is another camp and that says no, the gangster is the person who perfectly understands the system and who embodies uh, mm. the system. It seems to me that you are part of this uh, second camp. Yes, I believe it's the second group you mentioned. My film is different than gangster movies because not only is there a gangster system, but there's also a traditional Chinese culture that plays a part in controlling people. I introduced a three female family to display the system of corruption in the society. The film shows how traditional Chinese culture controls people through Confucianism. You can see the Chinese style of control throughout the film. Uh, I am very interested in the fact that this film has in it the very traditional and the very modern. Okay. So wh what was your idea of, the in of including the uh, traditional musicians who, who are not playing in Mandarin? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, th they are juxtaposed with the modern media mm. at the same time. I needed a narrator to explain such a complex plot to the audience. It took me a long time to find one. One day I saw a music video on the internet with an old lady. It reminded me of when I was little. Taiwan had many soap operas that included a narrative telling stories through songs. So I called her right away and brought her into our production. Later on, it proved to be a right decision. Using a traditional method to tell a story of modern soap opera is very effective. One key, key feature of this film is that um, all of the women have to be interesting while they are doing terrible things to other people and also uh, to themselves. So I think this put a, a very large burden on you as a, as a, as a director because uh, the choice of these three actresses is so important, and they of course come from uh, different moments in, in, their, in their careers. So talk to us a little bit about why you chose these particular actresses, so, who, uh, one of whom, of course your lead actress, is extremely well known in the Chinese speaking world, less known, I think, in the English speaking world. So talk a little bit about uh, Kara, if you would. Okay. If you would yeah. Taiwan is a multicultural country with immigrants from mainland China, Taiwanese who have lived here for two or three hundred years, and the indigenous people who have been here for thousands of years. There's also an imported culture from Japan and Holland. So Taiwan is a multicultural family. So I deliberately use an actress who's not from Taiwan. That's Madame Tang. She's an excellent actress. After she had read the script for the first time, she already decided to play this part in her mind. But when she met me for the first time, she still played a lofty Madame Tang to test my ability. What I feel is interesting is that there are three generations of actresses that come from different places. One came from Hong Kong. One is Taiwanese local actress Wu Keshi. But before this film, she had always played as Burmese. She'd never played a Taiwanese role. And the youngest one was born in Taiwan, but has been growing up in Beijing and received a traditional Chinese education. That's Tang Zhen. These three actresses have different styles, different backgrounds. They formed a strange family. 
奇妙家庭，一个。On the surface, it is a family in harmony, but actually, they don't know each other that well. I'm also very interested by how complicated the plot is, and also by how you handle that as a storyteller, because、uh, we see something and we think we see the thing,、yeah. but you keep coming back. Uh, and we understand that there are many layers. There are many things happening here that we do not that we do not、uh, see.、Uh, was that always part of your conception of how to to tell this this very complicated story of a crime family? 关于这个非常复杂的。My female producer forced me to dig deeper into the characters' inner conflict. As a man, I wasn't very familiar with the female mind. But if the film only talked about political corruption on the surface, it would be boring, and a lot of people had already done that. So I had to display the female inner world in this movie. It was very difficult for me. For example, the youngest one, Tang Chen, her admiration and jealousy of the love between her cousin and Marco. I had to use many ways to express that. It is like the way that traditional Chinese express their desires. They don't talk aloud their desires directly. You need to peel out layer after layer to show their real desire. So, it's tough work on me. This is a very Beautiful film, and by that I'm referring to your command of the visuals、uh, in the film, in which many terrible things happen.、Yeah. So I'm I'm very interested in、um, your concept with the production designer and with the cinematographer about how to create this particular world of this family. A lot of people have commented on the beautiful scenes in this film. Actually, the movie's budget was modest. We had to create many of the luxury scenes. Luckily, I had been shooting TV shows for more than ten years before I became a movie director. So I knew how to use only a little money and limited space inside a house to present a luxurious environment. Using a small budget to shoot high-end scenes is the toughest job I've ever encountered in my movie career. I guess it must be tough for other directors as well. So I'm thinking. Production, uh, uh, production necessity, and that is to create such a density、mm. of visual、uh, interest, and that that I think is related to this density and complexity of the story that's、mm. being told and the world they 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 live in. It's almost a a world of baroque complexity. Taiwan's culture is complex. I've done surveys on the lifestyles of some rich Taiwanese. Some are not fit for this movie. The scenes in this film may not fit everyone's idea of wealth. I discussed this with my art director and set designers. Everyone had to follow one photo that I shot. It was of petals of red and yellow flowers. Withering and falling into water. I told everyone to follow this photo's direction. I wanted the scene to be beautiful, but withering, half rotten. I believe this is an effective way to communicate. We may not be able to get the house of our dreams or the costumes we have imagined when we shoot a film. While we are compromising with reality, we may forget the original idea for such a scene to begin with. So that photo became our Bible. No matter how many changes we made, we couldn't forget the original idea. Be extravagant, but withering and rotten.
let's uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about how this um, film was received here. I mean, you 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 it is been nominated for multiple awards. It has won multiple um, awards. Uh, but, but I'm interested in uh, if, if you think the, uh, your Taiwanese audience, it really touched them. Yeah. And, and if you could comment on what the Taiwanese may understand about this film that an international audience may not understand about the film. Actually, Actually, many scenes in the movie can better be understood by Taiwan's female audience instead of by male audiences. There are many details in the movie that are picked up faster by Chinese or other Asian females, like the relationships between blood relatives and women's inner struggles. I didn't anticipate that the male audience would understand less than the female audience. Why does gender matter so much? So I wonder if these might be the same issues for international audiences. I don't know if it is also true in other racial groups that female audiences understand more than male audiences. So let's, let's go to uh, away from this film and to the current moment in uh, Taiwanese filmmaking and, and the future. Uh, first of all, uh, aside from the fact that we're sitting in Taipei City, what do you think makes you a, a Taiwanese filmmaker? Because most of my films are made in Taiwan. Sometimes I also go to the mainland or to Hong Kong to make movies. I shot some commercials at other places as well. Of course, Taiwan lacks resources. I mean, shooting resources. But because of the lack of funding, many creative ways to make movies have developed. For example, China has film censorship. So many filmmakers invent creative ways to avoid being censored. So do the Taiwanese directors. They become more creative when confronted with a lack of resources. They can produce different kinds of film the world has never seen before. I feel we are lucky. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit um, about the future. It's a very exciting moment in filmmaking globally because distribution is changing, yeah. formats are changing, you can now tell a story in two hours or you can perhaps tell a story uh, in six hours, uh, etc. Et what kind of opportunity does that uh, give to you? What do you think about it? And also what do you think uh, it might mean for Taiwan and filmmaking? My future plan, which I'm working on now, is a film of magic realism that was adapted from a novel. As you mentioned before, with internet platform releases, movies have to change a lot. Like now, I am making a TV show for internet distribution. I feel it is a good thing that artistic styles change because of the distribution channel change. Because nowadays, young children's reading habits have changed. They won't stay inside a theater for two hours. But if I shoot a half-hour video which will let them know more about this world, I think that is a good thing. Otherwise, we are limited to a fixed format and can't come up with anything new. So I think that we change as the platform changes. That's a good thing. Taiwan is an, is an island that has created uh, a really wonderful set of, uh, of filmmakers, perhaps disproportionate to its, to, its, uh, to, its, to its size. Why do you think the world, not just the Taiwanese, should pay attention to the cinema from this island. Well, 
Because Taiwan's culture is more complicated than other East Asian countries. Our ancestors came from mainland China, Holland, Spain, and local indigenous people have been here forever. These complicated cultural backgrounds mark the differences between people from Taiwan and people in mainland China. Taiwanese are also different from people in Japan and people in South Korea. So I think that this is a huge advantage. Because our culture has so many origins, at least in Asia, our movies are more easily accepted. Because our culture is more complicated, we understand more about how to have a dialogue with other ethnic groups. In Taiwan, we have a local group and an outside group that came from the mainland 70 years ago. Our film has to satisfy at least these two major groups and their different ways of speaking at home. Language is an important part of the thought process. The numerous cultures will make the creator's vision wider so he can have a dialogue with different groups. I think this is an important point of Taiwanese movies that needs to be revealed to the public. Yacha, I really yeah. want to thank you for taking time from your busy schedule for I think it was a very special visit and for sharing your vision of storytelling and filmmaking in Taiwan. It's been a great pleasure chatting with you and I wish you all the best in your coming films in whatever platform they, be, they may be screened on. Okay, thank you very much. A, a great pleasure. And I want to thank you for joining us yet again on City Cinema Tech. This time we're coming to you from Taipei City, uh, Taiwan, but please tune in in following weeks as we continue our stroll, perhaps back in the studio, perhaps not, through the archives of film history. But in any case, thank you so much for joining us today. The preceding presentation of City Cinematheque was made possible, in part, by the support of the Taipei Cultural Center in New York, the Ministry of Culture of Taiwan.